have a comparison of this. I concentrated on um, one group being Catholics, another group being pagans, two very different religions that have very different views on these matters, um, and where those view views <coughs> align and where they differ the most was um, a big part of my um, research. So when I was deciding who I wanted to talk to, of course I wanted to talk to elders within the community. This was easier with uh, Catholics because they have range of leaders, they have deacons, they have um, a, a tier of leaders. Whereas in the pagan community, that, that doesn't exist. Um, they just have elders which have been devoted to the religion longer than other people, and those people are put to the same regard. Um, I also talked to local tattoo artists and piercers who could give me um, some insight into the practices um, without necessarily the, uh, from the viewpoint of a religious person. Um, when I was going through this, of course, as I mentioned before, um, your kind of research into this was, was very important into um, kind of setting the um, same methods I wanted to use with this research. Um, I also used theories um, from Irving Goffman and, of course, um, Norbert Elias, um, who has uh, covered the way that interactions within a, the same group contribute to different, are the same ways of thinking or attitudes toward a certain subject. Um, when I was doing this research, of course, as I mentioned, I did a lot of in-depth qualitative interviews. I wanted to be able to talk to people um, in a way that they could expand on these ideas rather than me having to act or ask a direct question. They could expand and maybe delve into some topics that I hadn't even thought of bringing up or I wouldn't have brought up if they hadn't mentioned it. Um, I was also able to watch people in the group um, interactions that they had. For the Catholics, um, this was a little bit easier. Um, I did most of that research within the community of St. Cloud itself. I was able to go to um, several Sunday night masses and watch people as they communicate with each other and interact with each other before and after the services, and then do um, group interviews as well as private interviews. I also did some work on campus with um, a, a Catholic organization there um, to kind of get, um, really to, to fill out my, my base of people. Um, I wanted to make sure I had the, the younger generation's view input um, also in my research. Um, when it came to the pagan community, I went to um, the Twin Cities where there is a, a fairly large group of pagans. They refer to Minnesota and Minneapolis and St. Paul in general, or in specific, excuse me, um, within the pagan community as Pagantopia because it's such a, a pagan welcoming area. I found that to be very interesting. Um, though they don't have necessarily a church, they do have um, places that they go to meet up with other pagans. Um, one being a pagan resource center, and then they also hosted um, uh, items called um, the Coffee Cauldron on uh, Wednesday nights. And this was a time for pagans within the community to meet up at a local coffee house and talk to members of the public about the religion. And I thought, what better time to, to do my interviews and also watch the interactions of people. So I did utilize both of these, um, both of these places as places that I could go to to talk to these, uh, to talk to pagans. Um, what I found most striking, of course, right off the bat, was that most pagans have some sort of body modification. Again, specifically, we're talking about tattoos, piercings, or forms of scarification, whereas very few Catholics had any of these markings. Um, to reemphasize that point, um, I talked to one pagan who, while he didn't have tattoos, he had piercings, um, and he said, if I was ever wanted by the police, they would put up my description as the only pagan without tattoos. And that's how they'll catch me. So um, that kind of puts the point into perspective of how rare it is to be a pagan in that community and not have tattoos. Um, very similarly, I talked to well over 20 um, Catholics one night at, at a mass, and I only found one who had a tattoo. So that, um, that kind of um, organized my research for me. Um, with the pagans, I want to concentrate on the reasons that they gave for receiving body, mod body modifications. The first and most obvious, of course, um, however, least popular would be just for the pure enjoyment of adornment, just the aesthetic pleasure of having something that they want that they think looks beautiful. Again, this was the least popular um, reason for getting that. Um, other reasons go into personal history as well as leading up to their beliefs in paganism. A lot of people I talked to expressed um, going through several religions before they came to paganism. Um, several of them, one of which was actually in training to become a priest before he, in the Catholic community, before he decided that that religion wasn't fitting for him and his personal beliefs and tried other religions and eventually found paganism. 
And so um, once they find that, and paganism itself being a, a religion that's largely influenced by the personal path a person wants to take, it's a, it's a very eclectic religion and has the ability to be, uh, for people to choose their own specific path within that um, religion. So those, gave, um, those reasonings gave a lot of inspiration for people who wanted to receive tattoos, um, whether it be depicting their personal path with it, within the religion or the actual path that they went on to finding that religion. Um, the most popular tattoos um, would, of course, be a pentacle, dragons, fairies, things found in nature's trees, sometimes stones or crystals were um, tattooed as well. Um, another, uh, as I was mentioning before, um, the personal beliefs um, part of it was very important. Um, I talked to one person who um, became very, have put a lot of importance into her body and what was her dominant characteristics of her body. So for example, she had two symbols, one meaning love, the other joy. And she had put the symbol for love on her dominant side, her right side, um, as a symbol for giving love and receiving joy. And that was what her personal beliefs had been um, drawn down to in a nutshell, she said. Um, I also found that these um, instances have a lot of um, social input, if you will. Um, it's not uncommon for pagans when they say that they want to, when they bring up in a, in a group that, you know, I was thinking about getting a tattoo or a piercing, for the group to collectively work on brainstorming sessions, to come up with what they should get, where they should get, what color it should be, things like that. Um, and one person said that this process becomes a ritual in itself, that the people actively um, try to figure out the answers to these questions. Similarly, there's also festivals or large gatherings of pagans where these um, getting a tattoo or a piercing may be part of the festival or the ritual there. Um, and if it's not, surely most of the time there is a piercer or a tattoo artist that they bring in independently to get people piercings or tattoos if they want them at these festivals. So um, I found that interesting as well. Um, finally, um, in some smaller pagan communities, um, it is asked upon their elders to receive a tattoo as a sign of devotion to the religion. Um, well, none of the pagans I talked to said that they were involved in this type of group. They knew people that were. And one of the reasons I was given for why none of them had um, gotten to this point is because, well, they had already gotten that sort of tattoo. And um, this was only asked of elders who hadn't gotten something like that quite yet. Um, Finally, uh, the last reason I was given um, is kind of more of a theme that resonates throughout the pagan community was that of being a population on the fringe. As mentioned before, these are people who have tried different religions before, didn't quite feel like they fit into those religions, and they kept moving on until they felt like they found a religion, a group of people that they could um, fit in well with. So they, were, they already felt in some ways, in several ways throughout their community, ostracized for the religion that they had and the, um, how long it took them to get there and the actual beliefs that went into this religion. Um, so it only seemed appropriate to some of them that they have tattoos and piercings, which while it's become a more popular practice, it certainly isn't completely accepted by the mainstream culture quite yet. Um, so it, it just seems, they said that it just seems fitting with their lifestyle that it's, since it, you know, they don't, their religion doesn't seem to fit in, that their other practices would follow the same pattern. Um, as I mentioned before, um, not too many Catholics uh, mentioned that they had received tattoos or piercings. Um, the most common, of course, is that it was very common for um, women to have their earlobes pierced once in each earlobe. Um, anything more than that, I, I talked to a group of, of young um, Catholics, um, ages from 20 to 30, and it just, it, the topic that I was bringing up almost seemed laughable to them. Like, they, they didn't understand why I would be mentioning this topic in this context. It, it, for some reason, it just didn't, I don't know if there was a lack of communication, but they just, they thought that the topic of tattoos and piercings on a Catholic was, was just almost laughable, um, was their, the term that they, one of them used for that. Um, so when I was, when I talked to them about this, um, I wanted to think about how, I wanted to talk about what the Catholics felt about it, why most of them on the opposite end of the pagan um, community, why they didn't have tattoos. Um, the first of which was, of course, the teaching of the body being a sacred place. A lot of them mentioned um, biblical texts that, um, entries in the, in the Bible 
that say explicitly not to mark yourself, though the translation of those things have been debatable. Um, and certainly tattoos have been used in, um, in Catholic traditions far back in the past, uh, not within the last 500 years. So um, again, there is always that underlying theme of the body being a sacred place. They're taught to keep their bodies whole and clean and pure. And of course, we can see that in several um, instances, whether it's you know denoting premarital sex or things like that. Um, this was just another extension of wanting to keep their bodies the way it was at birth, um, without markings. Um, however, I talked to some people who felt that um, that actually thought that fewer Catholics were getting body modifications compared to 10 years ago. And this really surprised me because I thought surely as children grow up in the church, um, tattoos and piercings are becoming more popular, surely there'll be more teenagers and people in their young 20s or 30s that you know, have gotten piercings or tattoos and that this trend would be moving upward. Um, this was actually not the case at all. Um, and I, I talked to one of the tattoo artists I talked to about this, um, said that even though that that might be what I'm thinking, um, it's still a very ostracized part of, of being in the church. And he said that one thing that was always very clear to him was that pagans would be less ridiculed than Catholics for getting a tattoo. So even though it may be something that is in the larger population overall, a rising trend, it is still something that is heavily ridiculed in the Catholic community. And that was um, one of his reasons why he gave um, to that. Um, uh, again, he backed this up with things such as um, uniform church services where people answer in unison or um, Catholic schools where people wear uniforms. It's the same thing he thought. Um, another thing I found was the varying degree of people who thought that it was acceptable versus people who thought it wasn't. This was a very extreme um, spectrum. Either people thought it was okay, why not? God teaches love and acceptance. This is great. And people thought that this was a very, 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 very um, big sin. And that was something that even you know shouldn't be talked about in terms of, um, like I mentioned earlier, one of the more popular things such as piercings on earlobes of women. Um, so that was another another thing I found um, interestingly enough. Um, one of the very big considerations um, when I was talking to Catholics as well as tattoo artists and uh, piercers was where and what you get tattooed. For example, a cross. Um, somewhere hidden will be more acceptable than, you know, of course, a dragon on your arm where it will always be visible. And actually, this was a very, very, very big part of the um, process of getting tattooed by people or pierced by people who uh, associated with being a Catholic was what they were going to get and where they were going to get it. Um, there is a constant fear of it being too big or being too visible um, to the people. Again, because I suppose because of the, the ridiculization that happened after that. Um, and of course, people said that they feel like it would be less judged if it was a religious topic that was getting tattooed on them. Again, a, a cross instead of a flower or a sun or something of that nature. Um, a, another thing that was brought up, um, especially among the younger Catholics I talked to, was that piercings are often associated with sexual activity or sexuality. And that was a, a very big reason why they never got piercings, is because they didn't want to promote that uh, themselves as somebody that would be interested in sexual things. So there is that as well. Um, so basically, I came up with a lot of um, differences. Um, pretty much the first one being the lack of discussion. As I mentioned before, the pagan community came together. They wanted to figure out what each person was going to get. It, like they said before, it became a ritual in its own right to talk about what piercing do you want, what tattoo do you want, what color it should be, things like this. Whereas in the Catholic community, as I expressed before, it was almost laughable. You could tell it was not a topic that was, was often brought up. Um, so one of the biggest differences I noted between these communities 